Do you want to find out how to unlock the two-handed sword parts as fast as possible? Do you want to use smithing for leveling companions? Or just use it for money? I have a smithing guide to help with all three of those. I'll show you which parts to use at each tier to unlock the rest of the parts faster. I'll show you which weapons are best for leveling companions. And I'll show you which parts and weapons are best for making money. We'll start with two-handed swords. These can be valuable very early in the process. I didn't min-max the absolute best, just an easy to remember guideline. I use the max size on all parts. Again, this will not give you the absolute best. In order to make the best, some parts have to be smaller or larger and not minimum or maximum size, but somewhere in between. It's too much data for me to present without enough payoff to you to make a difference in the long run. So max length on all parts. Later, I'll tell you when to stop. Getting started. Tier one. The default blade, simple war sword blade is best until you unlock tier two blades. The others fall short. The default guard is best until you unlock the tapered desert guard. It was close, but this narrowed out the top of the list. Any tier one handle you unlock is better than the default leather wrapped one handed grip because they allow multiple uses, which adds value. If you're new to smithing, each of the uses adds value to the weapon. In this case, both one handed and two handed uses adds to the value. The default pommel, the flat pommel, is as good as the others until you unlock the globe pommel, which is the best by far. Remember to make all these parts the maximum size as it adds a bit of value. On to tier two parts. If you've unlocked any tier two parts, then logically you have all tier one parts unlocked. Stick with the tier one tapered desert guard and the globe pommel as they edge out all tier two guards and pommels. Any curved tier two blade will work. The iron scimitar blade is the best. Any handle that allows both one-handed and two-handed uses will work. The last two tier two handles in the list are the best. That's the split rough leather longsword grip and the rough leather knobbed two-handed grip. When you unlock the tier two lipped guard or half moon guard, use that to replace the tier one tapered desert guard. When you unlock the tier two disc pommel or wheel pommel, use that instead of the tier one globe pommel. At this point, the swords should be worth almost 5,000 dinars, plus or minus bonuses or penalties, and use wrought iron and iron. Now for the tier three parts. Once you can make a weapon with all tier three parts, stop maximizing the size of the pieces and simply use the default size. In some cases you gain some value, but others you will lose value with max size parts. Remember, I'm not going for an absolute best min-max recipe. I'm going for a very easy to remember guideline. And that guideline is, at tier three, stop maximizing the size of the parts. In general, the curved blades will give higher values. A two-handed sword made of all tier three parts that has both one-handed and two-handed uses and a curved blade, in most cases, will be worth around 10,000 dinars, plus or minus. The best tier three parts working together are long saber blade, knobbed guard, iron ring bound rough leather two-handed grip, and eastern flat pommel. Although the eastern flat pommel is the best, it requires one steel to use and only adds about 500 more to the value. A better option might be the top pommel, which requires one iron. Beyond this point, you need to determine why you're smithing. Is it for XP or money or both? If you're leveling companions with smithing, then you will want to use the most valuable weapon you can create, which is a two-handed sword using these parts. Leave the parts at the default sizes. If you maximize them, it decreases the value. Since you're smelting them for XP, it's not a big difference if you forget. You can use any valuable weapon to level companions, but this will give you the highest XP gain per weapon. If you're smithing for money, then you don't need the most valuable two-handed sword. You want one that uses low quality crafting materials, but is valuable, or uses the fewest materials and is still valuable. For low quality materials, 
Make one of these two-handed swords. Use this guard, this handle, and this pommel. And use either this blade or this blade, depending on which crafting materials you have available. Either of these combinations will be worth at least 8k, depending on your trade skill and various perks. Each of these parts is unique, in that they use crafting materials of a lower quality than all other parts at the same tier and they only use wrought iron and iron. With all the throwing daggers giving these low quality materials and having high availability, you should never run out of materials or money. If you're making money and want to be efficient with the materials you use, then you'll want to unlock two-handed polearm parts to get the highest dinar to crafting material value. Look for valuable two-handed polearms to buy in towns and smelt them down with a curious smelter perk. Your goal is to unlock the handle short pine shaft. Once that's unlocked, use it with any of the blades that allows throwing to finish unlocking the rest of the parts. Now you can craft valuable weapons that can be made with one hardwood and one of the other crafting materials. Add one of the banners that require no materials, like the tier five oriflam or long fanion to raise the value even more. With these pole arms, raise all parts to the max size to get even more value from them. Using crafting materials from one tribesman throwing daggers, you can make these six weapons worth almost 44,000 dinars. I removed the modifiers to give you these base values that you see here. The rake head requires no materials to make. So rake head, oriflam banner, short pine shaft, and no pommel you can make a 3K weapon that uses one hardwood and one charcoal. Some weapons weigh significantly less than the crafting materials used to make them. Take the wooden hammer, for example. It weighs 1.48, but the materials you get when you smelt it weigh 30.5. Always buy wooden hammers. If you smelt two wooden hammers, you use two charcoal and end up with six hardwood. Use two of those to refine three charcoal. Now use one hardwood and one charcoal to make a rake worth 3k. And do it two more times. Two wooden hammers and two charcoal equals 9,000 dinars. And the hammers are lightweight. Only smelt them when you're ready to craft some rakes. For a good explanation of why two-handed pole arms using that handle are the best for printing money, watch this video.